Hello and welcome back. This is the chassis for the 6146 amplifier. But we're getting ahead of ourselves a bit here. So let's go back in time a ways. We've got a provisional placement which I think looks about right. The centres for the output transformer at the back, I've tried to keep them like a whole sort of measurement, like three quarters in this case, three quarters of an inch. I might end up using EL34s in here, but that is a six, oh, I can't remember what the bloody world called, 6146. So that should be about right. You've got to be about three inches apart I tried to make output valves. That's about two and three quarters. That'd be either a face splitter or cathode follower because I'm still not sure really whether I'm going to make this an AB2 amp. I'm going to have to get into the design a bit more. That'd be either a cathode follower or face splitter. This would be a face splitter. This might be an input valve going across there and obviously symmetrical on the other side. And that seems to about fit. So now what I've got to do is line them up properly and then drill. Well that's all the centres marked out, at least for most of the big components. So now I'm just going along with a sharpened screwdriver rather than a centre punch so that the centres are as bang on as I can, oops, bang on as I can get them. I find this way is a bit more accurate. My eyesight isn't brilliant. The mounting this is going to be a bit problematic. As you can see we've only got one sort of bracket. There's no feet like on these transformers and the output transformer. So I either make it drop through, which might be easiest, or I'll have to make some brackets up, which is no big deal. I mean, it's not a lot to play with. But I can probably find a bit of scrap steel to do that with. But anyway, what I want to do, I want to get this mostly built so that I can build the power supply properly and the output stage, and then I can test it all properly. Right, I'll crack on and get that done. I've got to go in the shed in a minute to get the pillar drill out to drill these but first I'm going to drill them with the best small drill that I've got just for a pilot hole and you have to be careful with these little drills because I bought some and the, they're not quite ground correctly so if you're not careful your holes are going to be off and I shall drill them with a instead of the little corals I shall drill them with a big drill which is faster, get a better result. Uh, basically I don't use the pillar drill, I just hand drill them, the little pilot holes. But I'll drill all the other holes with the uh, proper pillar drill. For our octal sockets, I've got these really nice octal, like, oh, are they? Are they bulgin? Made in, can't see what they are. Anyway, they fit in like that. They should do. Bloody well did the other day. Oh, that one does. And then you've got this clip that clips underneath there. So they'll go in there. One of these will go in there. One will go in there like that. That's for either our cathode follower or face splitter. And then we need to drill a few more holes there. And like I say, I think I've got to try and get some um, countersunk 3 mil screws, bolts, whatever you call them. And then, when I've got all the fettling done, then I need to, I want to paint it. And obviously I've got to paint all the bell housings of the transformers too. I'm going to go for British Racing Green, which I've tried to do on a few ampli um, other amplifiers that are built, but didn't end up using the chassis or I'd cocked it up for some reason the painting bit is uh, can be it can knacker all your work I mean all this work can be knackered 
you know if the paint job doesn't go very well but we'll give it a go I'll have another go this time uh, like I say with British Racing Green I'm just working out where to put this B9A is that right B9A socket so here's our two output valves and the, out, the outputs are gone because it's a cathode pullover the outputs are gonna come off the cathodes so let me find some pointy so on this B9A it's a 12BH7 so we've got A G K so we've got a cathode here going round and a cathode's here so what I want to try and do if you can see that is get the cathode so we can take a well it's not going to be a capacitor it's going to be just a bit of straight wire but I want those capa uh, those cathodes to be lined up with the output valves to be with me so say if we had it like that and we've got a cathode that's quite near to this bulb but then we've got a cathode and it's got to go all the way over here so I want to try and make them equidistant our cathodes now are equidistant from these two output valves maybe something a bit more like that would be no I think no we'll keep it to there so there we go that's the best placement for that so now I've got to try and transfer that angle there over to this one. I've drawn a line through our two mounting holes using a set square. A bit fiddly trying to do this. But I've worked out if we stick a knot on the one end at about here I'll mark that. And that gives a that gives us our angle. Likewise with our uh, six one four six valve, I want to get this valve base placed uh, so that it's the right, the optimum placement. So you see that green wire there. That's that'll be up two heaters. If we can, we want to get those two those heater wires coming in at the side there meaning here so that would be the best place for that that would mean our heater wires can get tucked into the corner of the chassis right, where I've got that screwdriver there that's our grid so if we point it that way our heaters are in the corner and then our grid is pretty near to our cathode follower but really that would be better wouldn't it from that point of view that would be better there it's got less distance to travel and that would mean that is good as well because then our heaters so where are we but one two three four five so that's our grid there and then that would mean this why this these two terminals here are still pretty much near the chassis we can even turn it around a little bit more pointing that way so yeah where are we? two and seven those two there are our heaters and then and where are we one two three four five then that would be our grid uh, I've got to find out where we want the other one see the other one wants to be the same we don't want to be we're going to have to run a heater wires this way around the back here we don't want them going over here where we've got a wire going from the cathode of this valve here to the grid there so I'm just looking at a placement again of a this one here which would be a 12BH7 well here's with all the valves placed each of the output um, 
valves are in and the valve bases are in as with the cathode followers 12BH7s and I've just got uh, various small valves here some Russian ECC88 ECC83s a couple of ECC82s there which I'll probably use those for the phase splitters so yeah that's a pretty good idea of what the end thing will look like and then just to make the front look busy because we like loads of knobs and whatnot don't we we'll probably have a bass and treble for each channel uh, probably balance in the middle there no we won't have a balance no I'll probably have two volume controls for each channel instead of um, one dual gang pot it makes the what do you call it makes the wiring maybe a bit easier less busy and then to save running a wire all the way from the back I think we'll put a inputs here so we'll have a yeah one or one or oh no that would be wrong wouldn't it would that look daft with one RCA there one channel in there and one channel out there would that look daft hmm we'll have to have a think about that yeah because I don't really want long runs anyway I'll shut up waffling get this edited get it out there to you lads and lasses if there are any lasses thank you very much for watching catch you on the next one ta for now